everyone, it's Allison here with New Little Life. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different because I'm just finishing up a course about research in the field of maternal child health. And for a final project, I had to do a ton of research on pacifiers and breastfeeding. So today I'm gonna to share with you what I learned, a bunch of the research I found, and when is the best time to give a pacifier to your breastfed baby. Okay, so let's just dive into some of this research and then we'll make our own conclusions at the end. Now, to be fair, the research on pacifiers and breastfeeding is really conflicting. So if you feel like some of this data conflicts itself, you're not alone. But let's start out with one of the most common known initiatives um, among mothers today, which is the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. Now, if you've never heard of the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative, I'll put some links down below for you. But a hospital that's baby friendly certified cannot give pacifiers out routinely. Now the policy used to say no pacifiers or artificial nipples at all. Now it says that the hospitals need to counsel mothers on the use and risks of feeding bottles, teats, and pacifiers. So they're likely not going to be giving pacifiers or bottles to any babies and they are supposed to counsel mothers on the risks of introducing that with the breastfeeding relationship. Now if you're not planning to breastfeed, this video is probably not for you. But for those that are breastfeeding, if you choose a baby-friendly hospital, they are going to limit their pacifier and bottle use. So that's kind of a nice perk of going to a baby-friendly certified hospital. So on the flip side, there's also some really interesting research about pacifiers and SIDS, which is sudden infant death syndrome. Several of the studies I found said things like this. Pacifier use may provide an additional strategy to reduce the risk of SIDS for infants in high risk or in adverse sleep environments. So a lot of the research does agree that pacifier use can help prevent SIDS, which I think every mom would want to do everything they could to prevent that because that's just a terrible thing to happen to a family. But the problem was that a lot of these studies excluded breastfeeding babies or mentioned, like I just read, that it is helpful for infants in high-risk sleep environments, which is typically not the breastfeeding babies. So while there is a lot of that research out there supporting that, just be careful, it doesn't always take into account the breastfeeding babies. Okay, now for this next piece of research, a lot of the research I found all agreed on this. Dentists and those in that field can all pretty much agree that long-term pacifier use is not good for your oral development, your teeth, your bite, your mouth structure, things like that. So here's what this study said. The prevalence of malocclusion, which is issues in the mouth, was roughly 71% in children who used a pacifier or sucked a digit, so a thumb or finger, for more than 48 months. So more than four years of pacifier use is likely going to cause a problem. 71%, that's a huge portion. When you looked at the group in the 36 to 48 months, so three to four years, that number went down to 32%. So when you go down to the 24-month mark of pacifier use, you're at about 14% of children that had some issues in their mouth. And that does seem kind of low, but also that is a good chunk of children that are having issues from pacifier use. Okay, now this next one was actually really cool. There's been a lot of studies done on pacifier use with preterm babies. And I'll go ahead and put this information here up on the screen for you to read. But in summary, they found that introducing pacifiers to the NICU babies did show some really good benefits, especially when these babies weren't able to suckle at the mother's breast. So ideally, you want the baby at the breast, but in the NICU especially, that can't always happen. So if the baby's being tube fed, there was a lot of studies that said that introducing the pacifier, so that sucking motion along with the feeding, had a lot of benefits. So pacifier use in preterm babies is a whole different realm, and I'll put a couple of articles down below if you want more information on that. And lastly, if we look at some of the reasons why moms and parents are giving pacifiers in the first place, I think this is really interesting to consider because I'm a mom, I get it, I've been there. There is definitely a benefit of the convenience factor with not having to take your breast out and feed your baby all the time and just using something like a pacifier or a dummy. So there was a study done in Australia a few years ago, and here's where some of the statistics that they presented. 79% of mothers had introduced a pacifier. 28.7% of those were advised to do that by a mother or a mother-in-law. So you mothers and grandmas, you have a big influence on whether or not these babies are getting a pacifier. 22.7% also said that they had been instructed to do that or advised uh, by a midwife. When they asked these mothers why they had introduced a pacifier, 78.3% said that they use pacifiers in order to soothe their infant. So that's probably the number one reason a mom would do that 
to soothe the infant without having to put them at the breast. 57.4% said that they use it to help them put their babies to sleep. And another 40.4% said that they used it to keep their babies comforted and quiet. So these were some of the benefits that mom cited of why they introduced a pacifier. And all of these are totally relatable. I get it. So if we look at one last analogy here, if you're trying to learn a new skill, for instance, playing the guitar, it would probably not be beneficial to also do some practice time on the cello. And for all you sports fans out there, if you are practicing baseball five times a week, it probably wouldn't also be helpful to use a baseball for half the time and a football for half the time. It's really useful when learning a new skill to practice one skill at a time and to use the right equipment. And I think that this translates really well to breastfeeding and pacifiers. If you were hoping for more of a definitive conclusion on this, I really was too. So in the end, the choice is really yours. You're going to have to use your mother or parent instinct here. If you want my opinion after all this research, if you're trying to breastfeed, the more things that you introduce to make that harder seem like an unnecessary step that you're putting in front of yourself and your baby. So if you can avoid pacifier use until breastfeeding is well established, that would be my recommendation. A lot of babies at that point won't even take a pacifier because they're so comfortable at the breast and they don't need it. So if you are thinking, I have to use a pacifier, everyone else I know does that and I don't know another way, I encourage you to try breastfeeding and using the breast as a pacifier for the first little while. All of the studies and links are down in the description, so don't forget to check those out and read them for yourself. We'll see you next time.